In today's video, we're going to be using Python coding to ask users some questions. Okay, now in this particular program, we're going to ask three questions to our user. And once the user gives those three answers, we're going to basically get the computer to say back to the user their three responses. I'll give you an example of how it works and it might make a bit more sense. So you can see here in the blue, Python is asking, what is your name? So let's just come up with a name. We'll write in Gary. And ask for Gary's age, let's just say 23. And what is his favourite sporting team? So let's pretend Gary's favourite sporting team is Cronulla Sharks. Okay, now when I press enter, the computer is going to remember these three responses here and put it into a full sentence. And the full sentence that comes back is, Hi Gary, you are 23 years old. Your favourite sporting team is the Cronulla Sharks. Alrighty, so that's the little program that we are going to be making today using Python code. So to get started, what I need to do is go to File and New File, so you get a blank screen up on your page. If you want, you can go back and close the Python shell off. Don't need that open. We just need to have this empty um, Python window. Okay, so the first thing we want our program to do is we need to ask a question that gets the user's name. Okay, so to ask a question in Python, you need to use the reserved word input. Input basically says, hey, I'm going to ask a question and I need the user to type something in. Okay, so when we write the word input, we then put in brackets and quotation marks and ask whatever question it is that we want to ask. So in this case, it is, what is your name? Put a question mark, put a space, then your quotation marks, and then a comma. Okay, so that's going to display on the screen what is your name. I'll just save that and show you what I mean. Okay, call this whatever you want, but I'm just going to call it messages. Oh, actually, I'll call it questions. It's not messages, we're asking questions. All right, so now that that's saved, you can run it. So I go up to run and run the module, and you'll see that Python asks what our name is. Okay, so we're using Gary for this example. When you press enter, that's the end of your app. Okay, nothing else happens. What we need to do to this now is get the computer to remember what the user's name is. At the moment, you just type in your name and the computer forgets straight away what your name is. Okay, so the way we're going to remember our name is we're going to create something called a variable. Now, a variable is just like a bucket, I suppose, that you put information into. You can take that information out. You can manipulate the information in that bucket. Okay, now these buckets or these variables need a unique name as well. Okay, it can just be one word in length. Okay, it can't be multiple words or spaces, it can just be one word. So in this case, I'm going to call this variable name. Okay, and it's going to store the value of the user's name. Okay, so go back to the start of your code, and just before the word input, I want you to write the word name equals. So this here is our variable. It's our bucket of information. It's called name. Okay, and in that bucket, we're going to put in whatever the user's name is. Okay, and that way the computer is going to hold onto that information in that bucket, and it's going to remember what the user's name is. Okay, so just save that, and we'll move on to the next question. The next question we want to ask is how old the user is. So we want to get their age. Okay, so I'm going to make another variable this time called age. Okay, you can call these variables whatever you want, but I'm going to keep them... Um, I'm going to keep them relative to what we're or what the question is that we're asking. Okay, so the age equals, and we're going to use input again because we're going to ask another question. Age will equal what is your age? Make sure you put a space after that question mark. Close your quotation marks. Close your bracket. Now, whatever age the user writes in. It's going to be stored over here in this age variable, or the bucket called age. Okay, and the last thing we need to do is we need to find out the user's favourite sporting team. So let's make one last variable called team, and it's going to equal, we're going to ask one more question, so let's put the word input. What is your favourite sporting team? Okay. And that now will ask three questions, and the computer is going to remember 
all three responses because all three responses are going to be saved in these variables that we just created over here on the left name age and team save that up and just test it okay and we should just ask three questions so what is your name we write gary press enter what is your age 23 press enter what is your favorite sporting team let's write sharkies for now press enter that's it that's as far as our program goes at the moment all right we're not quite finished the last thing we want to do is we want to display now in a full sentence these three answers okay so if you think back to our last tutorial we did the key word we need to use or the reserved word in Python that we need to use to display messages on the screen is the word print okay so write in the word print and open up some brackets and in quotation marks we're going to write hi put a comma a space and close the quotation marks okay then we're going to put in the plus sign and we're going to write in this variable up here called name all right that's all i'm going to write for the minute okay so i'm just going to close that bracket off we're not finished yet but i just want to show you what that does so basically we're going to print a message on the screen that says hi and then we're going to put in the variable name so whatever the user typed in for their name we're going to display it down here let's save that by pressing Control s and then f5 to run it and we'll see what happens so let's put the name age and the sporting team again and you can see now it says hi gary okay so it has remembered what the name was up the top here in the first question so in this case i wrote gary okay so it remembers that that's the name and it sticks it in the sentence down the end here all right so that's looking good but there's more to go we've got two other um, bits of information we want to put into this final sentence so after name i'm going to put another plus sign and then i'm going to put in some more quotation marks i'm going to put in an exclamation mark here just to finish off this first part of the sentence which says hi gary and then an exclamation mark i'm going to put a space and i'm going to write you are space quotation marks and we're going to put another plus sign and this time we're going to put in this age variable so whatever age the user types in it's going to appear in here okay then we'll put the plus sign put in some more quotation marks and we'll put in a space and write years old full stop so that's going to say hi gary you are 23 years old okay and the last bit is your favorite sporting team is the put a space quotation marks put in a plus sign and we're going to use the team variable over here we're going to put that in so whatever the user answers for their favorite sporting team will appear over here okay at the end put a plus and in quotation marks we put in a full stop all right i've got a bracket at the end to close everything off and that should be it so control s to save f5 to run let's see if gary who's 23 has a favorite sporting team as the sharkies hi gary you are 23 years old your favorite sporting team is the sharkies okay we've got that working so we've asked three questions up the top and using variables here we were able to save the answers that the user types in and then down here in the final sentence we took that information that was written up the top and added it into this sentence okay now when we use this plus sign here it's actually got a special name when we start to join strings or, or strings of letters together or words together it's actually called concatenation or we concatenate words together which means basically to join them together okay so if you ever hear the word concatenate in coding it just means that you're joining words together okay and we join them together in this case to make a full sentence all right so hopefully that made a bit of sense i'll stop the video now and i'll catch you in the next tutorial